Got another little CRT television here. This one's a Mitsubishi made one. About uh, 30 odd years old. This one is uh, dead. In fact, it's only doing one thing. It's humming. You know why it's humming, right? Because it doesn't know the words. So this is a little uh, Vectra Home or Mitsubishi CRT set that I've had for a long time. It hasn't been used in many years. I'll plug it in. Turn on the power. Does it work? No, it doesn't. It just hums. So let's see why this one doesn't work. This is Mitsubishi. Now the way this set is humming like it is, is uh, it's telling me it's a problem probably in the standby. It almost sounds like the relay humming. I'm thinking capacitor in the standby circuit. Where the hell are they? One right here, I think this one. C935 uh, maybe? 395, sorry. Let me see. Let's pull this one out. This is right on the standby supply. I think this one here might be the one. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think this capacitor is shot. I didn't even have to test anything. I'm just, I'm just looking at the, the standby circuit. And the standby circuit is... Uh, well, that cap open. One of the legs is burned right off of it. Let me just grab it or something. Hey, this might be the only problem with this is I felt a failed capacitor in the standby circuit. Let's just grab this thing here and pull it out. You'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, that cap is shot. Where's the other leg to it? Looks like the, the positive leg is burned right off. Is it the positive? Yeah, positive. The positive leg. I'll show you guys in a sec. That was right across here. This is a standby filter. It's always got power. It's got the 12 volt standby transformer that operates the remote control and the power relay and everything else. Solder wick. Clean up that board a bit. Lose the standby, nothing else will Just work. Just the way that it was humming as soon as I turned on power. Kind of said standby supply. And yes, sometimes we get lucky and we can find a fault within a few minutes. Now I've seen this fault hundreds of times. It's nothing new. Not really so much luck, it's just knowing how the, uh, the circuit is laid out. Okay, this cap is 25 volt, 330 microfarad. You see what I mean? It's toast. Let's put a new one in. I have a 470 here that'll do the job, I'm sure. It's just a, it's just a filter. Okay, now, let's see if this thing turns on before I put it together. Oh, okay, still not turning on, but it's not buzzing anymore. Okay, it's not buzzing now. 
do we have voltage? We have 15 volts, so our standby supply is there. Hmm. Now what's wrong? the hell? Now it's turning on. What the heck? Well, the relay's clicking. I'm just doing some testing on here, looking at some of these connections down here. And I don't see anything bad. And now it's, now the relay's clicking. So I wonder if the set's turning on. remove that. Looks like someone's had a little test point on here, haven't they? While the relay is clicking, let's see if the TV is turning on. Still nothing. The power relay is clicking, but no high voltage and nothing else. Well, it's clicking. But I don't see a picture. What else is wrong with this thing? So that means the uh, the oscillator is alive. The the chip is alive. It's got voltage. Why is it not turning on? Just check for some voltages. Okay, B plus, B plus coming on. Yes, B plus is coming on 121 volts. Therefore, this thing should be running, but it's not. Regulator's got 120 volts. Whoops, where are we here? So the regulator's working. And that filter there charged up. So I've got no horizontal drive, looks like. Okay, let's figure out why. Don't you just love these mysteries?
So we're going to look for, I got no horizontal drive, I'm just going to look for a voltage. This is my drive transformer. Let's see if we've got any voltage to it. It's got 13 volts, so that means that the, this resistor is not open because it's got supply voltage. We've got no drive signal coming up to the, the drive transformer. Just looking at the traces. Trace comes along here and it ends up Looks like it ends up right on this transistor here, Q501. I don't have a schematic handy, so I'm just kind of having to look at the, uh, the circuitry and trace it out. And it looks like it ends up here on collector. So the base will be driven. Oh, this is ugly. So what's happened on this, what happens on all these, some capacitors in the past have leaked and if the, uh, the electrolytic that leaked out of them is basically eaten through the solder on a lot of these connections to different components. And I bet you this is where my problem is going to be, is that we've lost a connection to a critical circuit providing drive signal. Ooh, you can hear it sizzling. Ridiculous. Okay, let's see whether I get any different results this time. Oh, look. I have it running. Connection problems. 
bad boards, basically. Will it pick anything up? I've cranked up the uh, cranked up the screen control just so I can see some brightness on here. Doesn't look like it's gonna tune anything in. Let's see what we can do here to make this thing work. Let's see, it's one problem after another with this one. Turned down that screen control a bit so it's not blooming as bad. Well, we got more than we had before. I guess I will uh, resolder a few more and uh, see if I can get this thing to work. I actually remember the history of this set because all these TVs I had given to me right over the years. This one here, somebody had put a plant over top of it and they watered the plant and they got water in it. That's what this damage is from. And just over the years, it's corroded away. And I used it for a while as a monitor for, for cameras, but then I stopped using it and put it away. And this is the problem that happens whenever you get uh, water damage is that, you know, years down the road, it can deteriorate. That's why we never, uh, if someone had a TV that they got water into, we would repair it, we could repair it for them, and we would tell them, well, it's fixed, but we can't guarantee that it will last. And sometimes people would just scrap it, they'd just go and buy a new one. They had lots of money to spend, and they didn't want to spend 80 or $100 to fix a TV that might break down, so they'd spend 400 on a new one. Didn't make a lot of sense, because usually they would run for years, after they repaired but some people would just scrap them and that's where this one came from I've got a couple I got another one that's sitting out of my patio that's been there for years and years it's another a Panasonic that uh, had had water damage and it's been fine but that's what I think happened on this one if I remember right now this one here was water damaged so I've got my raster back I just don't have any signal one of these connections in here, I'm sure, is one that pulls voltage up from the from the flyback. Uh, it's one of the rectified voltages that goes up to the tuner and the video circuit. And somewhere in here, there's probably a connection that's bad. And I'm missing a voltage. And usually just by reheating these things and uh, resoldering them, it will fix the problem a lot of times. Because I'm sure I'm just missing a voltage. What the problem is. I mean, it wasn't turning on before, and that's why it wasn't turning on. I was missing a voltage to the oscillator. Fix that, but I'm missing a voltage to the, the video circuit. And that's exactly what it was. Just resoldered a couple more connections and got this one working off the tuner. Well, I guess this one's probably working as well as it's going to work. And uh, I don't know what I'll do with this set. But uh, it's running again. It actually doesn't have a bad picture on it. Really. Gloomy a little bit, but uh, it's not bad. You know, it's it's not bad for the for the age of this set. It actually, you know, thirty year old TV. It's uh, not looking that bad at all, actually. This one's a suffering capacitor failure as I run it. <laughs> so I guess I'll be changing. I'll be changing a few caps on this one. But it's working. So we'll change the caps and put it together. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.